Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Al Mahmoud. Uh, in terms of sustainability, what is sustainability? Uh, imagination. Imagination is probably one of the most important or the greatest resource we have. And you show, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you show how important it is that the school not only stimulate the imagination, but as well make it fruitful. And this is going to be, I believe, what is going to be said by Vivek Bharati, who is the vice president of the Pepsi Co. India region. Mr. Vivek Bharati is welcome to come to the front. He's going to talk about water sustainability uh, from its own perspective, Pepsi uh, perspective. And I leave you immediately the floor. You have 30 minutes. How do I use this? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'll give you a developing country perspective of what a large corporation can do to practice water sustainability. And this is a case example of what PepsiCo has been able to do in India. And <clears throat> So let me just first tell you who we are, and subsequently I'll tell you what we do. <clears throat> well, this is just to tell you that uh, <clears throat> we have a fairly, PepsiCo is the world's second largest food and beverage company, and we also have a very large footprint in India, being one of the biggest food and beverage businesses in India. We've been there for 25 years, and we have clearly established a leadership position in the food and beverage sector. <clears throat> And in line with the vision outlined by our chairman and CEO, Ms. Indra Nui, we believe that while we <coughs> deliver financial performance to our shareholders, we are equally responsible for promoting sustainability, all-round sustainability, and looking after the planet and its people. <coughs> and environment sustainability is a very key plank of that vision of performance with purpose. Let me give you a context of water in India, and that will give you an idea of the approach we have taken for practicing water sustainability in India. <clears throat> India is, in terms of purchasing power parity, among the top three economies in the world, and will continue to hold that position over the next <clears throat> uh, 20, 30 years. And by 2050, it's supposed to emerge, predicted to emerge as the third largest uh, economy, very close to the United States in terms of purchasing power parity. But India would face this challenge of water sustainability. As you see this here, we are already very water stressed in India. And by the time we reach 20, 2050, we will be very close to what is defined as water scarcity. This is cubic meters availability of fresh water supplies per capita. That is, it is just trending down at a dramatic rate. And by 2050, we will have to deliver more food and water, sorry, more food for a much greater population with 26% less water availability. And we will have to solve for two problems, not just food security, but we'll also have to ensure water security. So far, India has solved for food security at the expense of water security. But in the future, they will have to coexist because of what I said earlier of the declining fresh water supply per capita. <clears throat> and already, there are predictions that if the current situation continues, Conflicts over water would mar the Indian subcontinent. There'd be conflicts between communities, between communities and industry, etc. <clears throat> and water would emerge as one of the key threats to the growing Indian economy and its population. But you know, the developing country context is different from the 
developed market context. And this is a key point that comes from this slide, which is that if you have to solve for water, let us say in the United States or in Europe, industrial water conservation becomes very critical. But in India, where 78% of water consumption happens to be in agriculture, and only 8% in industry, unless you solve for water conservation in agriculture, you will not solve the problem. And because of this huge dependence of water on agriculture, <clears throat> this also translates into challenge for rural communities. Uh, <clears throat> nearly over 70% of people in rural India do not have access to tap water, and their access to fresh water supply is also dwindling. So this is a twin challenge. You have to solve for agriculture, you have to solve for access to com for water for access to communities, and simultaneously, since you're a manufacturing company, of course, you have to address water conservation in industry itself. What I'm saying is you need a far more holistic approach if you have to address the water issue at large and not just look at within the fence, but also look at outside the fence. Hence, <clears throat> when PepsiCo embarked on its journey, we clearly identified that we don't have to work just within our plant, but we'll have to look at agriculture and we will have to look at communities, water access for communities. And we looked at agriculture also because being a food and beverage company, we have the skill sets, we have the supply chains in agriculture, and we could actually look at that area as well. So a holistic approach, water conservation within the plant, but at the same time, step outside the plant and look at water conservation in agriculture and create water access for communities. And today we can proudly say that after 10 years of this journey, PepsiCo India is the first beverage company in the world to achieve what we define as positive water balance, which means that we re replenish and recharge more water than we consume in our manufacturing operations. <clears throat> and we've been able to achieve a significant success within the plant where our water usage per liter of beverage produced has gone down from 7.3 liters of water to around 1.98 liters per water today. <clears throat> uh, and our target is actually to bring this down to 1.3 in the future. Simultaneously, we have tried to look at innovations in agriculture where we can impact large crops such as paddy and potato. In paddy cultivation, in India, we have pioneered some innovations which can reduce water consumed in paddy cultivation by 30% and by introducing drip irrigation in potato cultivation, which reduces water usage by 20%. Simultaneously, in communities, rural communities around our plants, we have created water replenishment recharge structures suitable to the context, which has created water access for around 50,000 people. In manufacturing, we have taken a compre comprehensive approach which identifies, audits every single point of water use within our plants. So five principles, reduce, remove, recycle, reuse, and use renewable. Renewable means that we also harvest rainwater in our plants. <clears throat> and besides uh, delivering sustainability benefits, it also gives us commercial benefits, in the sense it reduces the cost of operation, it reduces energy cost, it reduces water cost, because the cost of water for industry is going up. And, and it is an all-round commitment by all the teams. It is not just there is one dedicated core group which is there, it is the entire teams across the plant and procurement, R&D, innovation, which is involved in this exercise. So it's a very com comprehensive exercise. And I must say that since, although I gave you the figure earlier, in 2006, PepsiCo declared its global goal of reducing water use in its manufacturing operations by 20% by 2015. In India, we've already achieved it well before that. And by 2013, we had reduced it by 33%. In fact, if we take 2006 as the benchmark. <coughs> we then looked at agriculture. Uh, in India, we had a large agriculture footprint and we were, also, we were also exporting paddy. And at that time, when we were working with farmers, we tried innovating uh, and tried to work out how we can reduce this huge water consumption in, in, in paddy cultivation. 
India has a fairly, sorry, water intensive way of consuming paddy. As you can see from the chart, India is one of the most water inefficient producer of paddy. It takes around 3,000 liters to produce a kilo, to kilo, 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 kilogram of rice. And about, if you look at another crop, 1350 liters per kilogram of maize. So if you export one kg of rice from India, you're exporting over 3,000 liters of water. That is the equation. Hence, water conservation, which is incidentally, paddy is also India's largest agriculture crop. <clears throat> what we did, if you look at the three bottom pictures, this is how paddy is conventionally grown in India. The fields are puddled with water, and then there are small plants where seeds are given, seeds are grown in a nursery, and there is, those are transplanted in flooded fields. And after the transplantation, the fields are, have standing water for two months. This is the conventional way of growing paddy. What we have done, we've done away with this transplanting operation. We have devised a seeder which puts the seed directly into the soil without going through the nursery transplanting operation. And all this flooding and puddling and transplanting is eliminated and it reduces water use in agriculture, in paddy cultivation by over 30%. It also reduces, delivers advantage to the farmer because it reduces his cost of cultivation. He uses less energy to pump out water because he's dependent on groundwater largely. So he uses less energy and he also uses much less labor because all these labor intensive processes are eliminated and he uses a cedar and his revenue per acre also rises. So this is an enhancement in livelihood, enhancement in income, plus water sustainability. The water table in areas where we have started uh, using this, the water table has improved after we have introduced this. And now the government has started promoting this technique. So this is now catching up and farmers across the country are looking at this practice to improve both incomes and environment sustainability. But let me give you a statistic about paddy cultivation. Our calculations show that if 50% of paddy cultivated in India can change over to the practice I've just outlined, you will save more water than entire, that, that is consumed by entire Indian industry. That is the size of the price. It's a huge, huge benefit. Similarly, we introduced in water stressed areas, we grow a lot of potato for our Lay's potato chips. We have a supply chain which extends into potato cultivation, which is managed by agro teams. So what we have done in areas where water is getting scarce, we have incentivized the farmer to use drip irrigation systems. We give them a higher procurement price so they can install drip irrigation systems, recover their cost within three, four years. And as a result, they save nearly 20% of water that is consumed in potato cultivation. Simultaneously, what they also get is higher productivity, of potato and also better quality, which is a shared value because we also benefit from it. <clears throat> Sorry. As I said earlier, you know, the vision of PepsiCo is performance with purpose. We must look after the people around us and this is a guiding principle that we have adopted in India wherever we have plants in rural areas, we talk to the community, try to make a needs assessment of what they need. And in areas where water is their crying need, we have developed community water interventions, uh, which of course vary from area to area because the, the type of zone that you're operating in is important. Somewhere we have built check dams. Other, uh, in other places we have built recharge ponds. In other places we have desilted existing tanks, traditional tanks which used to conserve rainwater, and thus increase the storage or holding capacity of those areas for uh, holding rainwater. You know, one of the main challenges in India, the precipitation of fresh water supply is very concentrated. You virtually get 75% of your rainwater in about three to four weeks. And if you don't have storage capacity, which India does not to the extent required, that water just flows off into the river and into the sea. So if you can capture that rainwater, you can actually, and 14, 15% of that can seep down into the soil, you can raise the water table, 
you can enable the farmers to grow more crops, practice agriculture, generate more revenue. So in some of the places, in fact, where there was water stress, after our intervention, within one or two years, we found that farmers are getting a second crop, whereas earlier they were challenged to grow even one crop. And in some places now they're growing three crops. So look at the impact on livelihoods. A water intervention can change the entire economic paradigm of a village. It, it generates livelihoods, it improves income, plus of course it generates water access for the community. And <clears throat> along with this, we teach them water conservation. In the morning I was listening to one speaker who said that beneficiaries must become the guardians of the resource. And this actually our community projects are a great example of that for the simple reason that this is done in partnership with the community. We invest in it, but the community manages this project. We teach them how to manage it, and now they not only look after the structures that we have created, they also learn how to allocate water among themselves. So it's a project which is given to the people, the people learn to manage that resource and practice sustainability themselves. Of course, we get the resources to teach them how to practice sustainability. So the result of all this, ladies and gentlemen, today PepsiCo India is a positive water balance company and it's externally valid validated. This is the equation. In 2013, we were water positive by 11 billion liters. And the significance of this lies, we are a very large footprint. We are a very large company in India, large business. The water harvesting at plants, plus community water interventions, plus promoting water conservation in agriculture, it generates more water credits to PepsiCo India than the water that we've used in our manufacturing operations. And this is externally validated. We measure this, uh, these savings on all our locations. And those uh, those uh, calculations are done by visiting the sites by Deloitte. And this is the certification that they give us year after year. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to take questions.